so we know you're here. Hey, good morning, guys. We're down here at the Ottaway River, just outside of Travis City. Um, we're here with the DNR and some of the Grand Traverse Band of Adair and Chippewa Indians uh, from their Natural Resource Department. And I'm very excited to be joined by Heather from the DNR. And um, Heather, can you explain a little bit about what we're doing here today and what sure. the purpose of, uh, of being here in the river is? Sure. So we're going to do a fish community survey um, here below Brown Bridge Road today. This is, I think, about the seventh or eighth year that we've done this particular station. Um, we typically do a population estimate, which is a two-day pass where we go, we go through this stretch, it's a thousand feet the first day, we mark, we electroshock fish, we mark them, and then we come back the second day and look to see how many fish uh, we catch that are recapped versus new fish to try and figure out how fish are moving in and out of this particular river stretch. Um, as I mentioned, I think we've done the population estimate for about six years of those eight now. Um, so we're going to take that extra day and we're going to move to a different stretch of river for this season. So we're just going to do one, one pass here today. We're going to do the same thousand feet that we always do. We will, uh, for the first 500 feet, we're going to look at every species we catch. Um, we do find some rough fish in here. We typically find a couple pike and some rock bass, some panfish. Um, and then after 500 feet, we'll just concentrate on trout. We'll do the same thing. We'll mark fish so we, we make sure we're not counting anybody twice. Um, and it's just a, it's a good kind of temperature check for us to come and look at this stretch of river every year and see what the fish community response to the uh, Brown Bridge Dam removal has been even this far down the road. Have you seen any uh, responses from the from the dam removal totally. with regards to fish numbers? Um, numbers have stayed about the same and actually the first couple of years after the dam came out we did see a decline in numbers to some degree probably as a result of just the, the changes that occurred um, a little bit of sedimentation that occurred after the dam breached but what we've really seen that's been interesting is the community itself when we came in here when the dam was still in place it was typically like three brown trout to every brook trout um, higher numbers of, of um, things like smallmouth bass and pike and perch and now that the dam is out we see the composition more even it's typically the past two years it's been like 50 50 brown trout and brook trout. And we're seeing a lot less of the kind of cool water, warm water species. We still see a few, um, but a lot less than what we did when the dam was still in place. So the response has definitely been good. And I think the numbers, the numbers will get back up there as time goes on. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. I don't want to hold you up. I'll let you uh, go and join One the rest of the queue. The brook trout, you might want to mention uh, about the, uh, the, the brook trout. And the brook trout actually need higher quality cold water. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> typically what you're seeing in, in the system is eight, six to eight degrees cooler than it had been with the dam in place. Dams are thermal pollutants. Uh, with that temperature, six to eight degrees cooler, uh, that influences the habitat that's more conducive to brook trout reproduction, and that's that 50, 50 that we're seeing with the brown trout and brook trout. And brook trout need colder, more oxygenated water. They prefer and they have a smaller tolerance range than brown trout do. So uh, it's a really, really good thing to see a, a species that is, is more, uh, more selective to good habitat uh, coming back at a rate that they are because the habitat has been improved. Awesome. Well, thanks, Frank. Yeah, you bet. We all set? Yeah, we're good. What time we got? I got 10.59. 10.59. 9.59, So what you're going to see in here is they're going to start with, um, they use um, some apparatus um, which puts a small electric shock into the water and that will then allow um, the fish to be captured without harming them in, in this section of river. So this is going to be interesting to see what they get. I would go a little bit further, but uh, the river's actually quite deep um, and quite fast flowing. And I don't fancy a swim this morning.
you'll see the processes. Things are being caught on the right hand end as we look. They're passed off net to net to go to Heather, who we just spoke with, um, who is weighing and measuring. So this is just down from the Brown Bridge area of the Bourbon River, formerly known as the Ottaway and soon to be renamed the Ottaway. And what you're looking at is the Michigan DNR, Department of Natural Resources, and the Grand Traverse Band of Adur and Chippewa Indians Natural Resource Department, working together on a fish community survey looking to see the effect of the dam removal on changing this Boardman River back to its traditional path and by removing the dams making it as one ecosystem. So it is now running at a much cooler temperature and consequently the original fish species like the brook trout are starting to come back in numbers. So hopefully today we'll get to actually see some of those fish. Um, the noise you hear is the generator and uh, the gentleman with the white hat is uh, using it to shock the water slightly so that they can comfortably capture and measure the different fish here. And this is a mixture of uh, full-time workers for the DNR and also, if you look, there's because uh, it's summer, there's, um, there's the youth who are helping as well. So hopefully you guys can hear over the, uh, over the generator. I do apologise, not much we can do about that. So I'll just try shouting. And just to show you this river. I mean, this is just such an idyllic area. So this is where we're starting, and I'll, I'll pan down and show you where we're going to be going. enjoying what you're seeing I'd ask you to go ahead and uh, share it out on Facebook so other people can enjoy and learn about the great work the Grand Traverse Band of Adawa and Chippewa Indians Natural Resource Department does uh, alongside other Michigan entities and government organizations such as the Department of Natural Resources that are here with them today. You'll be able to find this and many other YouTube videos on my channel if you look for Let Your Soul Play. There's a whole playlist all about the work the Grand Traverse Band of Adair and Chippewa Indians have been doing regarding the uh, river restoration project and the dam removal. And that playlist will continue to grow 
alongside other playlists that are there with the other great work they've been doing regarding shutting down Enbridge Pipeline 5. All in the name of protecting the water, protecting the environment, and making sure the future generations have the same blessings that we have today. There's a, fair, there's a fair amount of things that are being found, mostly along the edge of the bank. There's a little bit of a better habitat for, for the fish. samples are put in cards so those are recorded so they can actually age the fish at a later date and then uh, the fish is let go so most of them there's a high return rate you know most of them are just shocked for stunned for a couple of minutes and they would have kept in a uh, if more fish than the poor fish that you can keep up with uh, wind up getting caught they wind up in the bin and uh, eventually they'll get identified otherwise they'll that right back in the water below the uh, below the fish shocking so you can have an idea of what the fish population looks like in this stretch of river. They've been doing it like Kevin like said for seven, eight years in a row now. Awesome, thanks Frank. And the item you see there going into the boat is the fish shop. That's the uh, what they use to put the current into the water. So you see there's a generator on the boat and they basically plug into a Right now, while they're sorting out the uh, technical issue there, what you'll see back here is where they are taking scale samples from the fish, and as Frank explained, they will then use those to later age the fish and identify them so they can look and see um, all the different par uh, parameters of the population here.
you yeah. Had to wear, like, and so yeah, I got you. Sorry, brother. Thank you, Frank. And if and if as they pull some of the the fish out, we could kind of get a view of them. That'd be kind of cool too. If sure, it's I can, I can get, we can come over here and do that. Do that. Sweet. I was gonna uh, wade wade over to join them, but uh, I'm actually only wearing uh, what we call in England Wellington boots, uh, so I can't really go that close so that I don't get shocked along with the fish. Um, so I've now got boots full of water, but I can't go any further. In fact, guys, if you do join a little bit later on, um, I will be live again, and I'm going to be live uh, with some of the people who are working for the anti-frack movement over in England. Uh, I'm going to be live from Derbyshire, England, uh, from one of the camps over there. We see what you've got. Yeah, for those of you that are just joining, this is um, the Grand Traverse Band of Adair and Chippewa Indians, along with the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, and they're doing a discretionary fish community survey, and it's looking at the different, all the different species that are in this stretch of water. They've been doing this for about seven or eight years now and specifically looking at this stretch of river as it's just down from where the Brown Bridge Dam was removed back in 2012 and they're looking particularly at the different types of fish numbers in this river due to the fact that now the dams are being removed, the river's being returned back to a cold water stream because when you remove those man-made ponds that are warming up the water, you're going to actually change the habitat and the fish that were originally here are going to have a much better environment to be in. 
right now I'm escaping backwards out of the water. <laughs> As if you've got the shockers coming my way. But what you're seeing here is that in the water there, uh, they're using a small electric current. And that momentarily shocks the fish. So they then can catch the fish on the surface of the river and take them to Heather, who is managing this project for the DNR. And what you can see happening there is the fish are being measured. They're taking a scale sample and they can then later age those fish and put together all kinds of different um, information regarding the fish population in this river. As you'll see, what happens is, as the fish are caught, they're passed net to net. So Heather, and I will zoom into Heather right now, and you'll see that she's weighing them, measuring them, and taking scale samples. So other determinations can be made about those fish. We might see if we can get a little bit closer to, to Heather. Just bear with me, I'm, I'm walking up the river now and I've got to watch my foot in as opposed to... Yeah, I'm going to show you some of the things that are coming out of here. So, there's the sort of thing that's coming out of the river. Um, and what is this? It's a trout. That's a trout. But due to the fact that I don't have any uh, waders on, because I wasn't aware, I need to get in the river. I'm going to jump out a second. Just because they're coming past with the, uh, with the shocking equipment. And that means that if I was in the river, the likelihood is I would get a slight shock as well. Because if you notice for health and safety, everyone that's in the river is wearing these um, rubber, rubber waders. The gentleman there with the yellow pole is actually putting the shocker into the water right into the edge of the bank where a lot of those habitats for the fish are and the people behind him have the nets and are scooping up whatever's, uh, whatever's found in the water there which are then going over to Heather in the background and she's uh, taking scale samples measuring the fish and they also actually slightly uh, they they mark the fish, which means that we, they don't catch the same ones twice with the trout. And in fact, we also have the Conservation Resource Alliance here. Um, the gentleman in the purple hat in the background, if you were watching before, you may have recognized him as my, uh, as my oarsman as we, we took the float down the Ottaway River.
Yes, this is a slightly different stretch of river from where we canoed the other week. In fact, if you go out to the YouTube channel, you'll find that canoe trip uh, on there, uh, along with a lot of other videos regarding the Ottawa River and the restoration project here. we're going to do is we're going to wander across and see if we can get out to Heather. And we can kind of follow what, what's coming in. Oh, I gave up on the water not going over the boots long ago. I was like, all right, whatever. My, my mum's not here. We used to get in such trouble as kids when we were like... So I was like, you know what, this is, this, we can, uh, we can do this. Stay on the bank, yeah. right? <laughs> All right, golf in two. Come here, fella. We got a golf in two. We got a brook trout two. Brook trout two. So when we, when we do these smaller fish, we measure 10 uh, to the nearest inch, you know, tenth of an inch, right? Brook trout two, and then once we get those 10, we just measure them to straight inch class. Brook trout three. Sculpin. Two. Sculpin. Two. We got one sculpin that's too small. We got brook trout. Two. Brown trout. Two point four. We got a brook trout. Two brown trout, eleven point two. Is that one of the larger ones that, that you see in the river, or what's kind uh, of the? This is kind of a medium-sized one, really. Um, probably a two-year-old. Yeah, probably a two-year-old fish. Um, in this particular stretch of river, we will see browns up to twenty. Wait, one more tiny little sculpin. Open two, open two, open two, open two, open two, open two, brown trout, three point two. Okay, up. Oh. Trout 2.2. And then you're just very slightly clipping the mm -hmm. end of the. We'll clip the very top of the uh, caudal lobe, the tail, just to indicate that we've already caught that fish once today and taken that off of it. Brown trout 8.2. You guys spell it wrong, you know that, Frank. It's aluminium. And right while they're doing the uh, fish survey, they have paddlers coming right down the stream. <laughs> wow. 
They're lively in there. Oh yeah. Brook trout three. Yeah, they usually come out of the shack. Pretty quickly, especially the smaller ones. Brook trout. Three. Brown trout. 6.4. Alright, so anyway, get you out of here as quick as we can. And then what you see them doing right now is taking a small scale sample and that will be used later on to be able to then age the fish accurately. Brown trout. 3.1. Yeah, this is a great, great stream for, for trout, brook and brown trout. And the brook trout are coming back <coughs> due to the temperature of the stream being lowered. Now the dams have started to be removed. And you're only going to see this improve over the next few years as they are currently in the middle of taking out the Boardman Dam. And following that, it will be the Sabin Dam. Yeah, Brenda, there's a really good documentary um, called The Ottaway, A River Reborn, uh, that will be on PBS. You can also find a sneak preview of it on my YouTube channel. If someone wants to put that in the comments, it's youtube.com forward slash let your soul play. Then you'll be able to find the playlist out there with all the videos that have been done about this river and about the great work the Grand Travers Band of Adur and Chippewa Indians Natural Resource Department along with various other Michigan and other government agencies uh, have been doing. Nice and brown. So what have we got here my friend? It's a nicer brown trout, one oh, of the bigger wow. ones. Yep. That's pretty. Yeah, it's one of the bigger ones. Cool. They get bigger than that though. Yeah. Let's follow that one over there and actually oh. see. That's a lively one. So how big is this one then, Heather? This, this is one a... is 13.3. Very nice fish. He looks like maybe we've met before too. <laughs> <laughs> is he uh, probably, how old would you guess? Is it it's still? This it's... one's probably right around, oh, how old? Three to four years. Girl crates in here are, are pretty good. There's definitely um, abundant food sources. We see a lot of sculpin in here and a lot of shiners. Yep. Yeah. Got both of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's the food. And is there's, yeah, there's, his, his, his dinner. His dinner. Yep. We've got a long nose, Dave. Three. And then we've got two sculpin. Yeah, yep. Two. And a two. And we've got a little brook trout that I already caught once today. 
<laughs> you can go back. <laughs> and then someone asked about Asian coal. Do they have any issues with that? Not here. Um, we haven't, you know, haven't really found them in any of our northern Michigan rivers yet. Um, we haven't, luckily, we haven't really found them on this side of Lake Michigan yet. It's been isolated toward the uh, Illinois, Illinois side. Sculpin too. Um, and truthfully, this is a pretty cold system. So it would it would be probably the last on their list, or one of the last ones on their list. It's kind of on the outside of their thermal tolerance, um, hopefully. So, but no, we have not seen any any Asian carp in this watershed. Brown trout, 2.9. Um, our, the invasives that we see up here tend to be rusty crayfish. Um, we have seen a couple of gobies in this stretch in the past, but not very many. I think partially because it's so cold, sculpin too. Um, and then of course our, our new invasive, the New Zealand mud snail, which is pretty prevalent in this particular stretch. Sculpin don't three. Fly. Oh, nice. Don't fly on here. It's a native aquatic insect. Brown trout, 8.3. Let's go to stone pie. Yep. Good. 12, three. 12.3. 12.3. No. What did I tell you? Uh, 8.2. Well, you said 8.3 to me. I said 8.3. Oh, I heard 12.3. 8.3. I'm not sure where you heard that. And then do you work for the DNR or are you doing like I'm an intern? You're a summer, summer worker? worker. Yep. Awesome. So what made you decide to do something like this rather than go out and have, have fun with the other <laughs> with the other teenagers and uh, youth for the summer? It's a pretty awesome job. You get to work outside and a uh, great learning experience. Uh, looks good on a resume for college. I love it. What are you looking to do in college? Uh, I'm going to Lake State for fish and wildlife. But I'm going to start off two years as undecided and go from there. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, you went to Lake State, did you? Most of us. Yeah. Most of us did. Yeah. No, I got one month left. I'm scared. Look <laughs> <laughs> out, seven point three. Awesome. Oh, thanks, guys. So as you can see, they're getting a little bit out of view. So we'll end this and jump up on the bank and maybe start another one for some other people. So thanks for joining guys, please share this out and do check out the YouTube channel where you can find all the other videos about the river and the work that the DNR, the Grand Travers Band and all the other government agencies are doing to restore this back to its former glory. Thanks.